This is the new $399 iPhone SE. It has a single rear camera powered by the same processor that's in this, the $699 iPhone 11, which has two rear cameras. But how do they compare? Let's find out. Both the front and rear cameras on the iPhone SE are pretty much the same hardware-wise as they were on the iPhone 8, but they get a huge improvement in image quality as well as functionality because of that A13 processor. Now you get things like Smart HDR for photography, you get the quick take filming button, it means you hold the shutter down in the camera app. You also get portrait mode photos both on the rear camera and on the selfie camera. And that is truly a first on any 4.7 inch iPhone. Okay, I, ugh, it's hard for me to even put into words how impressed I am by what the A13 Bionic chip, along with the iOS 13 software on here, and well, just how much has transformed this iPhone 8 hardware. But how will it handle against the iPhone 11, which not only has the best camera system on any iPhone ever, but also one of the best all around cameras on any phone. Also, um, I should apologize. You're gonna see a lot of photos and videos of me because that's just the result of what happens when you're trying to test phone cameras against each other in these times. Let's talk about camera hardware. On the back of the iPhone SE is a single rear camera. It has an F1.8 28 millimeter lens. If that sounds familiar, it's because it's the same one found on the iPhone 8. Now on the back of the iPhone 11 are two cameras. You got a main camera and it has a F1.8 26 millimeter lens, but it also has an ultra wide angle camera and that has a 13 millimeter F2.4 lens. Obviously, since the iPhone 11 has a second rear camera that's ultra wide, it's not fair to compare it to a non-existent camera on the iPhone SE. So instead, I've created an ode, a montage of photos and videos that I took with the ultra wide camera on the iPhone 11. Enjoy. <laughs> In good light, photos from each phone are very similar in terms of image quality. I mean, look at these pictures of a tree I took in my backyard. Can you tell which phone took which picture? Yeah, now you see my point. Yeah, the iPhone SE photo is framed ever so slightly tighter because of that 28 millimeter lens compared to the iPhone 11 with its 26 millimeter lens. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that whether you're on an iPhone 11, 11 Pro, or the new iPhone SE, that smart HDR is optimizing those photos. It's bringing out those details and it's pushing that dynamic range as much as possible without letting the image fall apart. These next photos of a tree in shadows with bright sky behind showcases that rather well. And in an extreme scene like this, with dark shadows and really bright highlights, we can start to see some room between the two phones. Check out the iPhone 11 photo when we zoom into 100%. You can see the shadows have more detail and aren't as dark as the iPhone SE. And if we look closely at the sky through the branches, you can see that both phones have blown up highlights, but the iPhone 11 has less. But when we step away from good light and get into medium and low light, we start to see the differences between the two phones even more. I took some photos of my bike trainer indoors in medium lighting. The most obvious difference is the framing is tighter on the iPhone SE than the iPhone 11. In terms of image quality, the photo from the 11 has a pinch more detail. Take a look at the wall outlet in the background. The photo for the iPhone SE suffers from noise in the shadows. That said, this isn't a huge difference, but I'd say for indoor and medium light photos that the iPhone 11 has the edge. And that edge comes from deep fusion processing found on the iPhone 11 which is not on the iPhone SE. 
And what that does is it optimizes the image, it minimizes noise, and brings out detail in those medium to low light scenes. Welcome to the darkness. This is the perfect place to show another big difference between these two phones, and that is night mode. The iPhone 11 has it, the iPhone SE does not. So what is night mode? Well, it takes a bunch of images, combines them together to make a photo that's brighter, has better detail, and less image noise. You could argue that this is not a central thing you need, but there's gonna be people who want it just as much as they want that ultra wide angle camera. So let's see what night mode is capable of. Now here's the photo from the iPhone SE of that tree in my backyard. Yeah, it's extremely dark. Now here's the same tree taken with night mode on the iPhone 11. I mean, it's not even close. Night mode is amazing. Everything's brighter, there's more detail. I mean, you can actually see what's going on. Now I'll admit this was a pretty extreme way to test the phones. So here is a slightly brighter low light scene of a book, an eyedrop bottle and my computer. Even before we zoom in, we can see there's more sharpness to the details in the iPhone 11 photo. And once we zoom in to 100%, we can start to see more differences in regards to the bottle of eye drops. Again, the iPhone 11 has better details and color accuracy. And that's not to say that the photo from the iPhone SE is bad. I, I don't think it is. But when we look at the author names on the spine of the book, the text looks softer in the iPhone SE photo. And also notice the difference in color of the book between the two photos. So what can we take away in regards to photos? Well, when it's medium and low light shots, the iPhone 11 exceeds because it can get that image detail and minimize that image noise. But in good lighting, both phones are pretty equal. In fact, I'm here filming on the iPhone SE right now using the native mics. This is my home setup, it's nothing fancy, but I'm curious to see how the iPhone SE handles in this situation. What does it look like? What does it sound like? And now I'm filming on the main rear camera on the iPhone 11 using its native mics. Just so you know, on both phones, I filmed at 4K, 60 frames per second. At first glance, the videos of me that I just showed you look pretty similar. But if we look closely, like at the speaker on the shelf behind me, we notice it's more contrasty on the iPhone SE than the iPhone 11. And let's talk about the lamp over my shoulder. In the iPhone 11 video, you can see the light isn't blown out, whereas in the iPhone SE video, it is. And that's because the iPhone 11 has extended dynamic range up to 4K 60 frames per second. And the iPhone SE's extended range tops out at 4K 30 frames per second. Now, it wouldn't be a Patrick Hall and camera compare without some slow motion footage. But before we jump into that, let's let's just acknowledge that this is a $399 phone. It can shoot full HD, none of that 720 garbage, slow motion at 240 frames per second. So here are slow motion videos from each phone of Espresso being pulled. Neither of these videos is perfect. In fact, both suffer from image noise. But if I look closely, the iPhone 11 video has more detail and better sharpness and color accuracy. Now, some of that actually might come down to the camera hardware. We know that the iPhone 11 has newer lenses and a newer sensor, whereas the hardware on the iPhone SE comes from the 2017 iPhone 8. Perhaps the place where it, there is the biggest difference between the iPhone 11 and iPhone SE is the selfie camera. The iPhone 11 has a wider front-facing camera and it's capable of 4K video and slow fees. The iPhone SE can only shoot 1080p video and no slow fees. Both phones have portrait selfie mode and again, the image quality is just a tad bit better on the iPhone 11. There's just a little bit more detail in those photos. But let's just acknowledge that some people might not wanna have all that detail on a selfie photo. Mm. So let's talk about selfie video. Okay, so I'm on the iPhone 11, this is the selfie camera on that. Just test out the video here and uh, trying to compare it to the iPhone SE. The biggest difference right off the bat is the fact that uh, this has a wider field of view so you can see a little bit more of my house. Yeah. And that impressive motorcycle. All right. All right, doing a quick video test here. This is the front-facing camera. This is the one on the iPhone SE. And I'm talking outside, 
It's kind of a sunny day, but I'm in the shade. And uh, yeah, how's it sound? How's it look? You can really see that difference in resolution, but also the audio. The iPhone 11, the audio sounds more full, has a little more clarity to it than that from the iPhone SE. And that brings me to the end. It's obvious that the iPhone 11 has a better and more versatile camera system, but the iPhone SE was able to go toe to toe with it and cost $300 less. Maybe the iPhone SE is a sign of the times where we should stop counting how many cameras we have on our phone or how many megapixels there are and instead focus on what the processor is because it seems like that's where it's getting all its magic.